But I don't think <laughs> she is not going to change. Who's that? Your, your lady. Oh. She will not change. She is in a lot better place. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's you got it. She got it. Yep. She, uh, she went peaceably, didn't she? She just went to sleep, right? Yeah, she was just, her breathing became. They weren't doing anything uh, medically. Nah. Her. No, she stopped that. I think she did the right thing. Yeah. Yvonne's good girl, man. Amen. All right. Who we got today? Hi, Rochelle. I said, we cannot let brother Kirk cut down. Oh, I just would have done it live anyway, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, why don't we start off then, anyway? Uh, girls can do what they want, but uh, we got to go on. That is true. Uh -huh. All right. Epoch Times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I like them, too. That's one of my favorites. That's the one I have it here. Amen. I, I watch them. I watch them. And the Fox News is but the only two. Fox News now is getting second because they got rid of a couple good people. I like the, uh, uh, what was that other one? Go to 350. We'll do a sweet by and by real fast. 350? Yeah, 350. <laughs> I just get my croaking voice, huh? Uh, I guess both of us. You want your bag, maybe? Maybe the ladies will do that. Oh. Nadine's got a beautiful voice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, you want it? Huh? You want it? You want the uh, 350? Yes. All right. Which one? Did you never mention? Uh, sweet by and by. Oh, okay. All right? Sure. There's a land that is fairer than death, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Now, 
we've been going through the parables, and he's put out um, in chapter 13, uh, you have uh, the seven parables of the kingdom of heaven. And, um, and the thing is with these is the first ones kind of were like uh, they gave... He gave the parable, uh, they wanted to understand it, the mustard seed, those things, the four different types of, of people, the word is the, the, the so the word is the, uh, they had said the word is the seed, the seed is the word of God, okay, and the sower went out to sow, and then of course, we went through that, and then a little leaven inside, now these three are different, these three, uh, I have, I've had a lot of trouble with these over the years, so it's not, these aren't very easy, and I know, uh, I've read commentaries on them, and what I see in the commentaries isn't very good, as far as, uh, you know, understanding these, not that I'm so smart or anything like that, it's just that, uh, you know, there's an insight here, and you'll notice it says in 44, and then 45, and then of course 47, it says, it begins with the word again. So what I look at is, these are going to be like different lenses. Like if Mark and I said, you know, we want to look at a project. Uh, uh, he was a draftsman, and him and I said, well, we're going to look at this uh, project we, we have over here. We look at the model, and all of a sudden Mark goes, i got to look at it from another angle. Amen. Yep. Okay? That's what these three are. These are looks back at the kingdom of heaven, but it's a look through a different lens, like as if you went in to get glasses. Right. Okay? Now, please stay with me. If you don't catch it, it's going to be a little tough. Okay? So, but I want you to catch this. Now, it says in 44, it says again, in verse number 1344, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto uh, a treasure hid in the field. The which, when a, a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth a field. So uh, this parable, we touched it last week. He says, uh, I love that part. It just says again, like, we're going to go over this again. Okay? He gave it to you once, and he says, uh, we're going to go over this again. I'm going to give you a different look at it. And he says, now he says the kingdom of heaven. Now the kingdom of heaven is a place, God is a person. Kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Like son of man, his history goes up to a point. He's a man. Jesus dies on the cross. Then it's what? The resurrection is the son of God. Okay? You're a son of man, your history goes. That's the physical part. The kingdom of heaven is the physical part. Kingdom of God is the spiritual part. Okay, you're not going to find that in any commentary most of the time because they, they just go through it and they don't really want to know what the bits and the pieces are to God's word. Um, so anyway, he says again, the kingdom of heaven is, is like unto a, a treasure hidden in the field. Now we know the field is the world. The field is the world. So this treasure is going to be hid in the world. Go to Exodus chapter 19. This is the fifth parable. Exodus chapter 19. It's likened unto a treasure that was hid in the field. It was hid in the world, this treasure. Exodus chapter uh, 19, and we'll start in, uh, let's down in verse number uh, 5. And God says, now therefore, if you will obey my voice, remember he was speaking to Israel, he was giving them the next covenant, which is the law, and he says, uh, if, now therefore, if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar what? Treasure. Treasure. You'll be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. He's talking about se separating people. Okay? I'm going to separate people here. Amen. And that's what he's talking about. Now look down at verse number. He says, you'll be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people on the earth because the earth is mine. Look at verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of what? 
Priests. Priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So he was looking for a peculiar, to make them a peculiar uh, treasure. Now, uh, let's face it, what happens? Uh, Moses brings down the commandments. And what do the people do? This peculiar treasure he wants. They, they sin. And then he goes after it. He goes and he brings the Levites in. Okay? Uh, the Levites come after that. But what he wanted out of Israel, you're my peculiar treasure. I wanted you to be a nation. A, a nation that was going to take this over this, uh, this, this earth. Now, he says, when a man. Now, look at verse number 44 again. Which, when a man. When a man hath found, okay, uh, the man, let's go to, uh, let me see, let's go to Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus is the book of worship. Worship, ceremonial law, how to worship God. God's particular in how he wants to be worshipped. And in 26, due to uh, Leviticus 26, look down at verse, we're going to start at verse number 14. And he's talking about what something he wants to sell. When a man findeth, now watch what he says. He says, and if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, you shall not oppress uh, one another. He's talking about buying. He says, don't oppress the guy if he buys. Look down at verse 23. The land shall not be sold forever. Why? For the land is whose? It's Are mine, God. Leviticus 26. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, it was saying the same thing, the buying and selling. Look at the 26. Look at verse number 14. Now watch. He says, but if you will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these uh, commandments. Now go uh, down to uh, verse number, um, verse number from fourteen. Go to twenty-three, and he says, and um, and if ye will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will contrary, uh, walk contrary unto me, verse twenty-eight. Then I will walk contrary unto you, also in my fury, and I, even I. God's, whenever God says, I, even I, just so you know, he's actually showing you two parts of the Godhead. What's that? He's showing you the Father and the Son, right there. They're in agreement of one, okay? And he says, I, even I, uh, will chastise you seven times uh, for your sins. Uh, verse number uh, 33 Twenty-six, thirty-three, and I will scatter. Watch, I will scatter you. What among the heathen? Amen. I'm going to scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities are waste. What he's talking about, he hideth the treasure, and he hideth it in the world. Okay, the treasure is Israel, and what he's saying is the kingdom of heaven is likened unto this uh, this man. He's got a treasure. He hides it in the world. The Jews are hidden today in the world, okay? But there's one thing about them. They cannot be enumerated in the world. I mean, uh, even they tried, to they, tried to, God, they tried to scatter into Germany. How'd they do? They didn't do too well, did they? God's taken his treasure, and it's, it's scattered in Babylon. We have it here, and even in the United States, they are his his people that from the flesh, the sand of the sea, and they're out there, and that's what he's saying. They're scattered out. I've scattered them. I hide them. Just so you know, they're not hiding very well, are they? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, but God said, I, I put them out there. I put them out there. The kingdom of heaven, it's hidden out there. What's that? It's my people, the sand of the sea. Right. Okay? And he hideth it out there. A man hides it out there. And he says, and for joy, for joy. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And in Hebrews, uh, 
in Hebrews chapter 12. It's just the first two verses. Watch how it says it. It says, wherefore seeing, uh, we also, this is after the uh, 11th chapter of faith, wherefore seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. There are all those guys that were in uh, 11, you know, Enoch and Moses and Abraham, these guys of great faith. God turns around and says, this is my hall of fame of the Old Testament in Hebrews chapter 11. You guys had a lot of fame, a, a lot of uh, faith, he says. He says, let us lay aside, verse uh, chapter 12, verse 1. And he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience Amen. the race that is set before us. Amen. Watch, looking unto who? Jesus. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now watch, who for the joy, you see the joys there? Yep. He that for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the joy. He he looked at it. See, you look at it and say, you see the cross and you see the punishment and you see the death. Jesus looked past that. He looked at the goal and, and the target. And he set himself for that prize. Uh, son, if you would like to have a bride, well, guess what? You're going to have to learn how to live for her and you're going to learn to die for her. And Jesus does as such. The Lord does it. Okay, uh, that's it. He says, and for joy thereof goeth, now watch, he goeth and selleth all that he had. That's his, his body and everything. He sold all, he didn't have anything. He gave it all up. Okay, and what does he do? He buyeth the field, what? With his own blood. For, for the, with his own blood. How did he purchase you? It says in the Bible, in First Peter, with his blood. He purchased you. We sing these songs. With his blood he purchased me. When we sing of our Redeemer. Okay? That's what he's, he's bringing in here. And he says, look, uh, I've lived for this. I've lived for Israel. And, uh, and I, I, I've seen the joy of them. And for that joy, guess what? I put it all on the line. I put it all on the line. And what does he do? He buys that field. He, with his precious blood. Okay, so we understand that parable a, a little better. What's that? He, he died for the whole world. Okay, and uh, he died for Israel, and he hid them among. That's the kingdom of heaven. And someday, guess what? He's going to come back for them. He's got, we're done. We're almost done right here. It's the rapture. That's it for us. He goes back to his people. Okay, now there's another look. Now, see, that's the look of the Jew. At the kingdom of heaven. Can you understand? Now the lens is going to change. You went in and now the, the, the ophthalmologist says, okay, we're going to turn the lenses so that you're going to see this a little differently now. And look at the next parable. And in the next parable, he says again, verse 45. He says again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one, he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and did what? And he bought that, bought it, he bought it, he saw this pearl. Now, uh, does anybody understand pearls? Pearls, there's three types of pearls, people, okay? Uh, there is the, um, there's the pearl that is, uh, you just find it. You open up an oyster. Uh, you didn't culture it. Uh, it's just natural. It's there. Okay, that's what we. That's a natural pearl. Okay, that's the one that's worth money. Just so you know, that natural one. And what happens with that is there's a. It takes in an irritation, and then it starts to put layers over top that pearl, and uh, layers upon layers. Okay, and how does it do it? Over time. And it builds it up. It's not, you got to understand, a pearl is not like any other stone. Number one, it's a live stone. It's live. Yeah. It's actually in there with the uh, alive, alive uh, uh, animal, uh, I guess you would say. Okay? Now, what happens also with it is formed at the bottom of the sea. 
Okay, a pearl is formed at the bottom of sea, and time it gets layered upon layered upon layer. Okay, and it's like a merchant man, a good uh, merchant man seeking seeking these goodly pearls. Let's go uh, uh, to First Corinthians chapter uh, twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve. The second type of pearl, of course, is the cultured pearl. That's when it's actually, they grab them and they put something in there. They get a pearl. That's what we deal with today, most of them. And then, of course, the last one is an imitation pearl. Yeah. Okay? So you have the three types of pearls that are out there. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. And let's start in uh, verse number, let's 12, 12. Now watch how he looks at this. He says, for as the body is what? One. One. Okay, remember he's looking for a, a pearl. The body is one. And have how many? Many members. And he says, and all the members of, the, of that one body being many are one body, so also is what? Is Christ. It's Christ. Amen. Is Christ. Okay, verse 13. For by one spirit... Are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been have have been all made to drink into one a uh, spirit? For the body is one, and not members, but many. Okay, so he's trying to say he said we're members of a body. We got a lot of people, and we all make up one body. Okay, that's the pearl of what we would call great price. So what we're looking at in this one is now we're going to look at the church looking through the lens of the church at the kingdom of heaven. He's giving three looks. The first one is Israel's look. The second one he's looking at is the church. Okay, and he says this is a pearl of great uh, price. And uh, uh, look at, let's go over to uh, Ephesians chapter uh, 4. I want one good pearl. It's gotten, it's gotten over time. It's, it's gotten better. It, we've, we've uh, cleaned this up. You take it out and, it, and, it, and it's there. It's cleaned up. It's layered. It's made at the bottom of the sea. And it's layered. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> now he says, now remember, one pearl. Verse number 4. Uh, Verse number, we'll just start at the beginning. Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, I therefore as a prisoner of the Lord beseech you, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness, meekness, with long suffering, forbear one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Here it is. There is how many bodies? One, one body. It's only one church. Amen? Amen. Okay. And one ha one what? One spirit. You'll notice it's a capital S. There's only one. Okay? One spirit in the bond of what? Peace. There's always one. Stay with me. How many lords? One. One lord. One faith. One baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in uh, you all. Okay? Okay. Uh, He's, he's trying to show you, even though there's a pearl and it's layered over, it's only one. It needs to be a unity. The pearl of great price is the church. It's the church. So we're looking at the kingdom of heaven through the eye of the church here. Uh, in the church. And he says, and he found it, which is the church, and went and did what? He sold all he had. Now, didn't the Lord do that? Yep. He sold everything. He laid it all out. It's He put it all on the line. Jesus paid it oh, all. Amen. We've been singing it for years. Jesus paid it all. Okay? And he went and, 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 he, and he sold all he had. And what did he do? He bought it. Boy. He put it all out there and bought that great pearl. So that's your second look. Your second look at the kingdom of heaven through the church. There's the church. You're catching a look at it. So you see, you have your parables, but now we're going to look at it with different lenses. One from Israel and one 
from the church. So if we have Israel, we have the church, what do you think the last one's going to be? There's only three types of people in the world. You have the Jew, you have the what? Christian. Gentile, and then you have the church. Amen. Okay? So who do you think? We just did the church, we did Israel, we did the Jew, now we have the Gentile. The Gentile. Yeah. That's the only one left. And that's the, that's the vision we're going to get, that the kingdom of heaven through the Gentile lens. Okay? And he says, verse number uh, 47, he says, again, now look at it again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea. The sea are the people, right? Yeah. Cast into the sea. And gathered of every what? Every kind. Amen. Which, when it was full, the net, they drew to the shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. Okay? They can't, they, they, look, you, you go out, you gather it all up, and, and, and let's face it, some are just not going to make it. You know which ones are going to make you bring them. You're bringing them the Gentiles that uh, stay with me. He says, which, when it was full, they drew to shore, sat down, gathered the good into vessels and cast the bad away. So shall it be when? At the end. At the end of the world. Yeah. That's how it's going to be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among, among the just, the and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of uh, teeth. This, you, you realize that the Bible calls the world, at the end of the world, what kind of world? It's a present evil world. So he's looking at it and he says, this is the end of the world. This is the Gentile look at it. You have to understand, you look at it and you're thinking church, church, church. No, you've got to think Gentile now. Gentile. Once they're saved, they're no longer Gentile. They are church. If you're a Jew, if you get saved, you're no longer a Jew. What are you? You're church. Okay, three types of people. We have a confusion on that because we keep thinking Gentile, Gentile. See, we like that. Okay. Uh, I think it was the Tower of Babel. What did they say? Give us a name. No, oh, yeah. Let yeah. us have a name. We have that today, so we won't be scattered amongst them. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, people. We should, as a church, we have a name. We have the church. We're Christians. Okay? The problem isn't that. The problem is that evil men grab that word Christian, and they put it into a, a like a kingdom, and now it's Christendom, and they're adding in people who aren't even saved, that just use the name of Jesus Christ. And what's really bad is they're using it to send people to hell. And that is the Protestants and, of course, uh, the Romans. Okay, they're using it to send, and, of course, there's others. Who's that? We have the Mormons. We have the Jehovah Witnesses. We have all kinds of sects that try to get together with a different gospel, sending people to hell in what? In the name of Jesus Christ. Th these are Gentiles that are doing this. Amen. And uh, that's the more of the look of this. And he says, uh, he says, uh, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net. Now let's go over. I'll show you. I'll show you something. Go to uh, Job chapter fifteen. Job fifteen. Job or Joel? Job. Oh. Job, like job. Fifteen. You're getting close on the verse. Amen. Job fifteen, uh, fifteen, and uh, let's go down fifteen to verse number uh, sixteen. It says, "How much more abominable and filthy is man?" With drink, which drinketh iniquity like water. Amen. Yeah. Right. I will show thee, hear me. And that which I have seen, I will declare. Which wise men have told from their fathers and have not hid it. Unto whom alone the earth was given and no stranger passed 
among uh, them, okay? That sounds a little odd, right? You've got to grasp that, okay? And now it takes some good deep thought for this. What's he trying to say? Okay, there, you have to remember now, there was a time when there was no word of God, amen? And at that time, there was no nation of Israel, really, at this time. And what he's saying is, he says, he says this is how the world, it kept going, and he says, uh, he says that these wise men have told from their fathers, uh, which I have seen, will, I will declare. He's saying, look, uh, it, it came down. It was kind of like my father told me, his father told him, and that's uh, basically from the word of God how it came to man. Uh, God put stars in the sky. He told it. He told it through constellations. Uh, people, it starts out with Virgo. Virgo is virgin. She has a child. And all those constellations, which we call Virgo, all these other things, can't. No, 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 no. God had them up there for his reason. Man took it and made it his. Amen. That tells the story up there of the gospel so that you could not have an excuse. And your fathers were told about this. Hey, look, the sign. We need a sign from it. There they are right there, people. And they came down and fathers spoke on what God had said. Uh, if you look in, if we were to look in Genesis, what you'll find out is it goes from Adam to Seth to Enos. Uh, by the time Enos was uh, on the planet, he even says in chapter 4, he had to call on the name of the Lord. Why? You hear all these kids getting born. Kids are being born. But you don't hear their names. Why? Because God don't know their names. They went and they chose evil. And man was, was coming to the point where they were being surrounded. God's men were being surrounded. Even to the point of chapter 6, he says, what? Uh, my men, the guys who loved, they went, they started to get together with everybody else. It was a mess. And God says, look, uh, I've got a problem. Why? Because man is also flesh. He's just not soul. He's just not spirit. He's also flesh. What's that? we got a problem here. And he's going after the flesh. Amen. So God has to win the, do it down again. And guess what? Sooner or later, I got another, I got a guy over here. Who that? Abraham. I got Abraham over there. It took a while. Do you realize that half the writing of the Bible was done after Genesis chapter 11? It's about 2,000 years right there. If you look at how long the Bible was written, you got 4,000 years. Let's look, 4,000 years of the Old Testament, right? And then the last writer, John, writes to about 96 maybe A.D. So that's another 100 years, 4,100 years it, it, of writing the Bible. And in Genesis chapter 11, it's 2,000 years. Half of the book has already been complete, and you're only up to Genesis chapter 11. Mm -hmm. After that, God's going to deal with men individually people. Why? Because God's a people person. Yeah. It's all events up until Genesis chapter 11 and then after that it's going to be dealing with people because God wanted to deal with people. He wants fellowship. And he sends this one out as a, a thing of the Gentiles. And he says this stuff, it was passed down all these years. It's like a net. We gather them up and everything, and uh, not you know, uh, as we gather them up, some are, some are good, some are wrong. Uh, remember Jesus when he says uh, he says to Peter and them, they're out on the sea, and he says, "Hey, uh, uh, put it on the right side. Put the net on the right side." And they put the net on the right side, and guess what? They pull the net up, and none of the fish got away. But if you remember years before that. He told them to do it on that again. And guess what? It started to break. Yeah. Things got away. The net. And he's trying to show you something. You're out there. You're trying to fish out there and fish out there. Be a fisher of men. But guess what? Some are going to get away. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to get them all. They're going to get away. And you'll notice, uh, I think it's a little odd. I don't exactly, I haven't done enough studying before. But when Jesus gets to the shore and they, they have the food, they count the actual fish I think it was 153. 153 out of all that's out there, 153. What's that trying to show you? Um, even in that sea, uh, putting in your net, you only catch few. 
There's some type of number that means something out of that 153. I don't know. I haven't done enough studying for it. Uh, I'm going to probably have to wait for God to show me. Yeah, I know. Okay? Uh, not everything is going to be, you know, not everything is given to you or revealed to you. So going back, going back into uh, this, we have, we have that... Uh, Job chapter 15 and how they passed it down. Now look at verse number 50. 1350. He says, and he's going to cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be a, a wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is at the end of the world. Let's go over and see the end where, where this end is. Okay. Uh, go over to Matthew chapter 25. Now, he had told them in 24, in verse number 14, at the very end of 14, he says, he says, then shall the end come. They wanted to know, when's the end of the world? When's the end of the world? And Jesus says, okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. You're going to be hearing wars and rumors of wars. And yet, guess what? That ain't the end yet. Don't you think it's a lot of foolish that guys will actually use that against you to try and get you to believe what they have to say? But you, because you don't read your Bible, you don't get to say back to them, hey, Jesus said that that isn't the end yet. And then they'll go through another shmeal, and Jesus said, what? That's just the beginning of sorrows. What's your problem? You didn't read. Yeah. You, had, you should have been reading that stuff. Why? Because they need to hear it, because they've been taught by some bozo in their little sect, in their little cult, and they're using it on you when they haven't read it themselves and now they're confused. Imagine having a confused man in front of you trying to catch you. And he can do it very well. Why? Because they've had lawyers and psychologists writing those pamphlets called the Watchtowers to you all these years. He says, when's this end of the world? Look over, let's go over to uh, chapter 25 and and look down at um, verse number, let's go to verse number um, 40, let's go to 41. Now, he's, what's going to happen in 31? He said, the Son of Man shall come in his glory, with all, and the holy angels are with him. He's going to sit on his throne of glory. And he's going to have all the nations in front of him. He's going to, uh, these are Gentile nations. He's going to separate them. Sheeps, goats. What's that? Sheep, they're the ones who are on my side, basically. The sheep on my right hand. Uh, the left is the goats. What are goats? They're rebellious nations. Yeah. Okay? Gentile nations, people. Now look at 41, and he says, he, he says to those, he says, Then he shall say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Why is that? For I was hungry, and you didn't help. I was put away, you didn't help me. Uh, they're going to be oppressing during the tribulation Israel. Israel will be down there and probably see La Petri, all in the all in that mountain area. They'll be singing in there while God takes care of them. They'll only get their needs. They're not going to get their greeds. Right. See, the problem is, right now, is they're taking away your greeds, and you're crying. Imagine what's going to happen to them. And they're going to cry the same way. People will leave the group, and bye-bye. That's what he said, Even though even the very elect, deceive the very elect. But getting back with the Gentiles, they'll, they'll be all out there, and who's going to help Israel? Who's going to help them? And he says, well, he says, well... Uh, verse number uh, 46 in Matthew 25, and he says, and, and, and these shall go away into what? Everlasting, Everlasting punishment. punishment. But the righteous into life eternal. The punishment he sends them to is, 
is everlasting. People, did you ever notice that people think, how long does God, i got a question for you, how long do you think God has to deal with a disobedient soul? Yeah. Does he have to deal with them for eternity? Or does he just, can he just go like this? Yeah. This is the problem with reading. God doesn't have to go through all eternity to deal with a soul. He has to torture it through all eternity. That's what you have to understand. The judgment is eternal. The judgment goes on. He didn't say that they that they will be, you know, just tortured for all that eternity. You see how uh, I, I get a little weird by all that stuff. I, I used to believe all that stuff until I started reading the Bible. You know, uh, a man's just, you know, it's like a man standing outside yelling at God, I'm going to get you. How are you going to get him? What are you going to, you can't fly up there. You can't do anything. You're a fool. Right. But that's how man thinks. And he thinks the same way. Oh, yeah, God's, God's going to have to deal with somebody through all eternity. No, he, don't. That's all he needs. Yeah. Throw him in a fire. That's it. It's an eternal fire. It doesn't need them to burn. They just, poof. On the judgment, it says the smoke of their torment. What's that? The smoke it didn't say the torments keep going. The smoke of their torment will keep will rise forever. And you better look into the universe and see how large and vast it is, and if it's ever growing, because that's what he says it is. You see, just a matter of reading. Just a matter of reading. Okay. So we have the first one. What is that? That's the Jew. That's the Israel looking at uh, the lens of the kingdom of heaven through through that. And uh, and the Jews are hidden throughout the whole world, but they're not hiding well. But God says uh, they're out there. They're out there. And guess what? It says in um, in Matthew 24, he sent his angels. What are they going to do? They're going to collect them all up at one time. In James chapter 1, he says what? He says, he says uh, that he talks to who? The 12 tribes scattered abroad. Yeah. Uh, even in 2 Peter, Peter turns around and makes a trip which we've all messed up. What do you think? Wait a second. I've got to tell you, ask you something. You think Peter knows the difference between Babylon and Rome? Oh, no, he can't. He's stupid. He must be really a dummy. Peter went to Babylon. Why did he go to Babylon? He, well, he means that as Rome. It's a figure. Peter don't know that. Peter knows what's in front of his face at that time in history. Stop adding to the scripture. Right. What happened? Well, Mordecai and Esther showed you what happened. What's that? When, uh, when Cyrus gives the decree for the Jews to go back, right? Mm -hmm. Not all went back. Right. Read Ezra. Read Nehemiah. They didn't all go back. Who's back? They stayed in Babylon and were good civil servants. Well, where have you noticed they do that? Huh? We'll just stay here. We're doing fine. Here yeah. we are down in Babylon. Yeah. I mean, start getting your theme of the book a little more better. Why is that? Because man always ends up in Babylon. Yeah. Man, here's the best they got. Let's, let's go and do our own thing. We don't need God. Where do we end up at the Tower of Babel 2,000 years later? Right. From Adam. And then man goes again from that. God scatters them out, picks Abraham. Abraham's put aside 2,000, less than 2,000 years later. Where are they again? Now the Jews are down in Babylon. Why? They didn't listen. Yeah. They lost their temple. Then Christ dies on the cross, makes a church. Where's the church go? Revelation chapter 17, 2,000 years later. Where's that? Mystery Babylon. Have you gotten this yet, people? Yeah. Where did Peter go? He went to Babylon. Why? Well, he didn't listen. They're still down there. And he went down there to see his own people. Hey, I'm the, he was the apostle to the circumcision. He, shook, he went there to tell him what? The Messiah came. He's the Christ. He came. Get back. Let's go back. We, you know, but I came here to tell you people what had happened. That's what has happened. Uh, how do you know that, preacher? Well, Cyrus isn't mentioned in Esther. Cyrus isn't mentioned in Nehemiah. Who's the guy? Artaxerxes is in Nehemiah. And guess what? Ahasuerus 
He's the one that's mentioned in Esther. It's very, it's not that hard. So that's our look at this. These uh, three, one look as the Israel, the first one again, through the looking at the kingdom of heaven with Israel in it. And then, of course, the church. And then, of course, the Gentiles. He, he's trying to cover all his bases and give you a look that you'd understand. And now you understand. A look at these things. Jesus is going to rule the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years after the tribulation. And the, it's called the millennium. Amen? Amen? And there's the look at all that as it sits in Christ right there. Amen. It's good to be saved, isn't it? Yes. Let's pray. Father, we thank thee. We ask you, Lord, to bless the bless the next hour. Thank you for the Thank you for us to show up, Lord Father, and, and uh, Lord, keep those who, uh, you know, just, just the weather's bad. Lord Father, it's nothing personal. And we thank you, Lord. Let's have a good time today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shut this off, and then we'll open it up for church, of course.